Welcome back to the Photomator Masterclass where we've been showing you all of the tools you need to get the most out of your photos and today we're tying it all off with a ribbon and we're showing you how to get those finishing touches. Now, if you've made it this far through the Masterclass, consider liking, subscribing, and supporting me on YouTube or Patreon. And of course, you can always check out my other projects, like my brand new channel that I just started with my little brother who is an animator at a small studio you might have heard of called Walt Disney Animation Studios, where we explore animation, film, and even make some of our own content as well. All right, with that said, let's jump in to the final episode. First thing you need to do is get your project file loaded into Photomator. From there, we're going to skip all of our normal editing adjustments and we're just gonna let machine learning do it for us. Now from there, we have a really good baseline photo. So from there, you just scroll all the way to the bottom. Now these are the tools that we're going to be using to get those finishing touches on your photo. I'm gonna go bottom up because I think they're easy to understand that way. First is film grain. So for those of you that aren't aware, when you shoot with actual film, there is a graininess that naturally comes through the film and it's something that makes it so that it's really easy to identify if your photo was digital or not. Now, the size slider is exactly what it says. You can see it controls the size of those grains that you're seeing applied to the photo. And so what I like to do is start all the way up at 200 and just go down until I can feel the film grain, but not really see it, if that makes sense. And then do the same thing with intensity. I'll drag it up and then just pull it back down until it's not obvious to me anymore. And I know this is a really small thing. It's just some extra texture in your photo, but it's something that helps your photo not feel quite as internet era, if that makes sense. Now, the next tool we're going to use is the Sharpen tool. Sharpen has two sliders. One is radiance, one is intensity. Radius is, radius is really confusing for a lot of people, but it's actually really simple. What it does is it starts at a pixel and you get to control how far out it looks to decide if that pixel is sharp or in focus. And so the bigger you make that search radius, so the number of pixels it's looking around it, the sharper you can make your photo appear. So if I go all the way down to zero, this is no effect. Watch as I slowly dial this up to 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50. You can really see how much sharpening effect you can get out of it. And some of it is just really too much. Now for this photo, something right around here feels okay. What I'm basically doing is starting at zero and I'm just sliding until it feels like it's a crisp photo, but not so far that I'm startled by how much sharpening is going on. And then I can do the same thing with the intensity. Now intensity you can think of as like a multiplier effect on top of this sharpening. So all the way up at 200 is like doubling the effect of the sharpening, which is basically always way too much. And somewhere around 50 or 60 is usually where I keep it. I think in this case, even like 46 is probably good. Again, this is heavily based on feel, making sure it feels right. And I think this hits the mark. Now let's go over to vignette. Vignette draws a circle around the outside edge of your frame, and then it either darkens it or brightens it using the exposure, and it darkens or lightens the shadows using the black point. So just to illustrate softness, I'm gonna really crank up exposure so it's easy to see what's going on. So as I dial back the softness, you can see how it comes in and out from the center of the image. So in this case, I'm not going for a strong vignette, so I'm gonna take the softness all the way down. Now the other thing is, I actually think this photo works with a negative exposure adjustment. So the edges just feel like they're getting a little bit blown out by this early morning sunrise. And then the black point, as I explained in the other video, is going to move what level is considered black. I'm gonna dial this down so that for these outside edge areas, they never get fully to black. Now we've made a lot of adjustments so far. So let's jump in to our split viewer so you can actually see the adjustments that we've made. So this is the beginning base level photo, and this is what we've done so far. I think it's really come a long way. 
especially over here, reducing some of the attention and drawing you right back to this center point right here at the end of this point, I guess. Okay, next is a LUT. Now a LUT is a lookup table and it's just a file that you can share between programs that copies your adjustments and your edits that you've made to the colors. So if I come in here, I can actually pick one of the adjustments that they've already got for me, which I'll be honest, some of these are actually kind of rad and I could totally see this hanging up in, I don't know, insert trendy shop here. But I'm going to use this lot right here that I purchased from Film Poets. I think it's really great. It's just a little strong. So I'm just going to take this intensity and dial it back right about here. I'm looking for these reds to really start hitting their vibrancy. So something about like that. I think that looks really great. And now the awesome thing with LUTs are you can actually take your adjustments that you have made and convert them into a LUT so you can save them for later. You can choose any LUT that you've downloaded from the internet and bring it right into Photomator. And if you have a LUT that you've pulled into Photomator, you can convert it into adjustments. So that means all of the settings contained in the LUT file become the color adjustments that are available up here. And then you can go through and fine tune and tweak if there's a part with the LUT that you don't really like. Now, if you don't like the LUT look, and maybe you actually were going for black and white and color monochrome, that's an option available for you too. So if you are going for the black and white option, you'll actually maybe be surprised to see that you get four sliders. Now, the reason why there's four sliders is this is letting you pick how much the red, the green, and the blue value for each pixel shows up as white or black. Now, there is no science to this. You just slide them back and forth and try to find the thing that looks nice to you. So in this one, I'm gonna go red to 100%. The only thing you need to be aware of is that you can't pull all of them in the same direction because that is the equivalent of making no edit at all. So I'm gonna go with about like that. I feel like this gives me a lot of contrast. And then tone, you can also think of it like a multiplier it controls the amount of contrast you're going to see in your black and white photo. So I think, I think moderate contrast is actually okay for this photo. So I'm going to put it right about here. So we've got two looks with just a couple clicks. I can do black and white, or I can do the LUT look. Now, you might also be the type of person that likes doing the sepia tone look, which is super easy to dial in. And you can also pick a different color if you don't want the traditional sepia tone. I just don't typically go for that. I just wanted to show it to you because a lot of people go looking for sepia tone and can't figure out where it's at. Now for me, I'm gonna stick with the LUT. I like that look. Now the last thing we're going to do is come up here to the fade slider. What fade does is it makes it so your blacks don't get all the way black and your whites don't get all the way white. Dialing up the fade on the blacks is super trendy right now and it makes your photos look retro. Dialing up the whites is maybe less common, but also kind of trendy, also kind of retro looking. So I'm gonna turn both of those on. Now, you may have noticed there are two of these that I didn't cover at all. Replace color is exactly what it says. You can pick any color you want and replace it with a different color. It's fine. I don't love using this tool because I rarely have a use case where I think, oh yeah, this color just needs to be a different color. But you know, in this case, you can see, you can get some interesting looks by playing with it like that way. The other is the channel mixer. I genuinely don't know anybody that uses the channel mixer outside of like astrophotography. So if you want a video about astrophotography, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to go make that video for you. I do, however, have a video where you can play with the channel mixer to try to get some interesting looks. So if you wanna check that out, I will link it down in the description below, but it's not really a common use case. All right, so let's open up our split comparison again. See the before, see the after, and I think it's looking great. And so now it's time to export our file. Now, I don't know that there's much that needs to be covered around all of these different file formats, the compression amount, the size of the photo. So for example, this photo is very large. You could even cut it in half and still be, you know, a solid 4K size. But what I did want to cover are frame, which 
can be super nice, especially since we're talking about getting some of those retro film looks. And also watermark, which is really nice. You can do a text watermark, an image watermark, and it has all of these controls to position on the screen, tile it across the image. It's really nice and handy. So for our photo, I kind of like the solid color, the thickness. I mean, you can get real thick, but I think just a little bit so it feels like it has a mat around it is nice. Corner radius, not as much. I don't feel like it needs it. And I'm gonna stick with white. And then for our watermark, I'm going to leave it as text. I am not gonna add a shadow to it. I'm gonna leave it positioned in the bottom right corner. And I'm going to turn off tiling. And so you can see, if I hit this preview image where it puts it, that's not quite where I want it. And so what I can do is I can come back in here and I can dial in this offset, which puts it more into that margin area. I'm gonna dial it up to 100% opacity because why not? And preview it one more time. Perfect. And then I just hit next to save my image. That is it for the Photomator Masterclass. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me. If you want to continue getting my videos early as I'm making them, make sure you support me on either YouTube or Patreon. And of course, we'll see you on the next thing. Thanks again.